Hello and welcome to Force4G Day 4. The presentations lined up today for this afternoon are Scaling AI to Map Every School on the Planet by Nana and Martha Morrissey, Artificial Unintelligence by Tasia Lydia, Geographic Mapping of Business Data by Marion Baumkata. Hello and welcome to Force4G Day 4. The presentations lined up today for this afternoon are Scaling AI to Map Every School on the Planet by Nana. Oof, sorry, there's a lag. Introduction to Big Data with Geotech Geomesa by Jim Hughes and Leo Vivas. Let me officially begin our first session by briefly introducing our speakers for the first slot. Swang Teng Nana Yi is a machine learning engineer and Geo AI leader at Development Seed. She's utilizing machine learning that is deep learning to assist international developments. Nana has years of applying machine learning, deep learning for feature extraction from satellite, set aerial imagery, as well as open source tool development. Prior to joining Development Seed, Nana was a research assist scientist at World Agroforestry Center East Asia Node. Her primary research included large scale geospatial modeling for tree crops, yield production, hydrological modeling, and wildlife conservation. Similarly, Martha Morrissey is a machine learning engineer at Development Seed. Martha is passionate about bringing open geospatial to academics and innovations as a basis for addressing large-scale global issues. She enjoys researching how humans can map faster and more efficiently using machine learning. Martha has rich experience in API development for machine learning training training data access, model creation, and model sharing. They've written a technical blog post that you'll be able to access from the link I've shared in Venueless. And if you have any questions you'd like to direct to our speakers, please send them to me on Venueless and I'll pass them along. Without any further ado, ladies, you have the floor. You can share your screen, Nana. <laughs> Yes. Um, can you guys see my screen now? Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, okay. Let me let me do it again. Cool. Can you see my screen now? Oh, should I go? You see my screen? Yes. Awesome, awesome. Uh, cool. Hey, everyone. This is Nana Yi, a machine learning engineer at the Bottom Sea. Are you seeing this? You know, like this is a, um, a, a group efforts, really. Um, we have a long list. Um, this is the joint effort between uh, UNICEF and the Bottom Sea um, machine learning engineer and cloud engineer uh, specifically. So uh, this effort is trying to map every single school on the um, globally um, on the planet. Uh, so based on the uh, workflow and also like work we've done with UNICEF uh, back in 2018, that we were able to spin up a image classification model and trying to map a uh, school in Colombia, we will su successfully uh, be able to do so. Um, through this exercise, we were able to map uh, 7,000 unmapped school in Colombia and uh, Club uh, Caribbean uh, Islands. Uh, so based on the work, you know, this is the time we actually make an action to basically like pushing these efforts to a global level. So um, in the next few slides, I'm going through uh, the work we've done with UNICEF. Uh, in Africa, Asia, and South America, uh, eight countries specifically. So, uh, you know, like bring into you is um, not just like basically the motivation of doing this work, right? Like UNICEF has a bold idea or initiative called GAIDA, um, trying to bring uh, every uh, single school uh, to the internet and connect young person to information, opportunity, and educational resources. So provide uh, choices uh, in the life for them. So, um, you know, like, but ideally that, right, like a school can be uh, 
very different, uh, look very differently uh, from country to country, from culture to culture within the country, right? Like uh, rural school does look very different from um, urban school. So that is the idea of, you know, like um, why, it's, um, why like school has been traditionally like collected through private sector or through um, Ministry of Education at the country level. Um, but such a school is not, a school map is not complete, um, accurate. Um, computer vision or deep learning can provide a perspective to help UNICEF to uh, basically map every single school um, um, on the planet. So that, that's when like diplomacy come to the picture um, in this, um, in this uh, effort. Um, this table looks very messy, but I just want to um, emphasize this is the, the things like, you know, like we receive a, a lot of a school from UNICEF uh, before we even start the project, right? Like those countries, like including, you know, like um, the schools that UNICEF get from a different organization, uh, they collect it themselves. And um, Development C um, have a, has a, a team uh data team uh, sit in Peru and they are, you know, like uh, expert mapper in OSM uh, community. So they were able to sweep a lot of uh, school, uh, query a lot of school from OSM um, database. So altogether we have about uh, 52,000 schools um, in this uh, exercise. And the next step is, you know, like if we want to train a machine learning, um, model, deep learning model uh, to, to this case um, because school, <clears throat> most of the school, right, like don't have a clear boundary and they just like learn in a community, a residential area, or sometimes they are sitting uh, outside of the community, right, like just outside of the village, for example. So they do uh, tend to be just like, you know, like ambiguous so it's not a right uh op right problem to solve by object detection or semantic segmentation but we do believe this is the should uh, a good problem to solve by image classification basically you have an image right like and feed it into the machine learning algorithm that was able to recognize if uh the image is school or not school and after that, we will have human come in to validate the machine learning um, uh, output. So this is basically the workflow. We do have, we do need to have like very high quality training data set. After we receive a geolocation of school from UNICEF and from OSM, we do aggregate them and overlay them on top of a high resolution satellite imagery. In this case is a Maxars VV imagery. And expert mapper go through every single of them and break break them down into uh, three category yes uh, unrecognized and no um, so specifically um, this is the three category uh, you're looking at the, the on the right side of the table right like yes unrecognized and no um, so when what do we mean when we say uh, yes uh, that is a uh, school complex or group of building that have very um, distinctive uh, school feature. Um, they can be, uh, you know, like building size are very, uh, like much bigger, uh, building shape look very different from um, residential area. And they tend to also have some sort of like facili facility attached to it. Like, you know, like basketball court, uh, running track, um, or, you know, it's just like some playground or empty fields. It depends on which, um, which part of uh, the world or country, like the school are located in. And when we say uh, unrecognized, um, it means like, you know, like a school building would just like blend in. Even you have a geolocation of school, when you first glend it, you just don't have an idea of which building belongs to school. So we turn to um, consider those as rec unrecognized. Unrecognized sometimes also like, you know, like there's a, just like a blob of cloud, like move over 
and we just can't see building at all. Sometimes it's a big tree, right? So um, there's a, a combination of uh, category uh, we consider um, recognized. Um, another category is hard no. It's like, uh, we have a geolocation of school, but they just like randomly fall into the forest uh, or farm field or even like in the ocean. So we, we, we just like, you know, eliminate those data points like, okay, unrecognized and no, if we use those data points to train the model, then we introduce a lot of uh, sort of like noise to the model, right? So through this process, uh, basically just uh, allow us to only keep the schools like have a, a clear uh, school feature. Um, that's what you're looking at, right? Like playground, uh, sport field, and, you know, like a group of building, uh, some sort of like a recognizable um, a feature that um, the principle over here is if you ask a human to looking at this um, long enough, if they can recognize certain pattern, then uh, deep learning model will do as well. If human can't recognize at all, then you shouldn't expect uh, machine learning will be able to do so. So that's the principle. Now we have a yes category and we will need to consider like, oh, you know, like what is the geodiversity of those uh, school? And if we should, how should we make the image uh, chips or um, you know, like how, how can we crop like a school as a training data set in this context, right? Um, so for that, um, we have uh, sort of like, you know, like we're using a, a sleepy, a sleepy uh, map tile. Uh, you know, like if, if we are using Zoom 17, um, it's, each tile is a square, a cover 300 meter by 300 meter. And uh, zoom 17 is a resolution around like 1.2 meter. Um, we do wanna have a higher resolution, right? Because uh, we want to present this uh, a future feature complexity to the model. So model will be able to recognize it, you know, whatever um, it makes sense to 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 learn from from the image chips. So instead of looking at Zoom seventeen tile, we we use the we use the uh, uh, three hundred meter by three hundred meter, but we look at the Zoom eighteen uh, tile, which is now become like uh, five hundred uh, twelve by five hundred twelve uh, image dimension. It's much larger image and higher resolution. Um, we find super tire really helpful in this context for uh, school classification. And now uh, we need, we do need, after we're making the, the super tile uh, uh, chips or tile uh, per each school, we do need to look at the geodiversity of the school category, right? So um, this is just like two example for your um, visualization that, you know, like, for country like Niger, right? Like school do uh, reflect the um, the majority uh, landscape of Niger, which is like drier and you know like building uh, tend to surrounded by bare earth, a desert look um, uh, landscape. But on the other hand, in Central Asia, uh, Kazakhstan is more greener and a, a little bit of like proportion of like you know like dry. Uh, dry land area um, as well. So imagine um, now we have a school, but not school actually is more diverse or including a uh, much more set of category compared to school. It just include everything else but school, right? Like including water body, forest, desert, um, uh, urban area, and also like some other uh, critical infrastructure we can consider like you know hospital uh courthouse marketplace a factory mall they they can look very similar to school so we do want to have those representation in the not school so by matching up with you know like a, just like a spatial or color space for those two categories 
So we are now like sort of like data manipulation uh, process or mining process, like trying to narrow down the searching space for the model to be able to separate uh, school and not school. So uh, after we going through this whole process, um, that is last step is creating a TF record that is like data format for TensorFlow model. Um, if you you are using other, um, you know, like PyTorch, then you, you do have other uh, data loader or something like that, right? So now uh, this is the amount of the data we're looking at. Um, for example, chat, you just like have a very small amount of uh, data to represent the, the countries, the, the school in the country. We just don't have enough data over there, right? So um, because we've done uh, many, uh, many, many times of experiments uh, through this, uh, we do uh, recognize like, when a country, a re reasonable size country, have a, around four thousand school to represent the the training data set, it it do it 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 the model perform much better. Of course, like more data will will allow model model to learn much better um, and perform better, right? But at a certain point, like the model performance going to platform, so um, you know, like. Our principle is, uh, for example, when you look at, at the Kenya, we do have way more uh, uh, total positive and negative sample to represent Kenya. So we don't want to include everything for Kenya. So we just sample like 6,000 schools uh, for Kenya. So that is can be a case as well. Um, and, um, you know, like, because some country just doesn't have enough uh, training data sets. So we want to uh, aggregate them and combine them. Uh, for example, Nisha, uh, country model, including Chad, Mali, and Nisha itself. Um, and Kenya, uh, of course, other countries just uh, re represent themselves. Um, I just want to make it a, a, a little bit clear. I, this uh, same process, we also want to learn that if we combine adjacent country uh, training data set to become a regional um, model, does that uh, going to perform much better? So we actually also do some other, other exercise that, uh, for example, Kenya and Rwanda combined uh, model become East Africa uh, model, and Sierra Leone, uh, Niger combined become West Africa. So um, then uh, we also like aggregate every single um, tree, student data point to be as you know, from six country to be a global, to train a global model. Now we have um, at least like nine, nine models to train, right? So um, this is the, if you do enough like machine learning or deep learning, you will come to realize like, model model uh, code, uh, machine learning itself is very small proportion of the, the whole pipeline, right? If we want to scale up the, the tr model training, we do have need to have a, some sort of like ML ops uh, tooling uh, to help us. In this case, we use Kubeflow. Um, Kubeflow, it was able to just like, you know, like um, deploying to uh, Google Cloud and spin up a Google uh, Kubernetes engine and allow us to scale up um, as many GPU as possible they want to be. So through this process, we um, we have um, you know we have uh, sort of uh, can train like many many model as many as possible, and we once we have a well performing uh, train model we will move to uh, model inference. And we do have another customized uh, model um, train, model inference tool called ML Enabler. And after that, uh, once we have like a prediction, we will have a human come in to validate every single uh, machine learning prediction before we even put the, the, the school uh, back to the map. So that is the whole process. Um, just to give you an idea, what does it mean to run a, 
a train model through a whole country. So for example, right, Ken Kenya is not a small country. Um, over here uh, on the right, right column of this table, uh, super tile, what you see super tile over here is already being uh, narrowed down as only um, populated tile because you know like the assumption is school only appear in the populated area right so uh, you don't really need to sample like you know ocean or uh, like dense forest so um, by only like selected the populated uh, super tile will be able to uh, not will be able to like speed up the inference process but we do look like for a country, right? Like we do look like we look like we have a about like 18 million uh, super tile we need to run the model inference over. So that is when the ML enabler come into the site. Uh, what you see uh, the GIF over here is ML uh, enabler UI uh, interface. So you input like a uh, project uh, name, um, you know, like project uh, information and who can access to this uh, tool and uh, you know, like other information, including uh, client, uh, cloud resources and project information. So what this tool does is um, just like spin up uh, a bunch of like AWS resources and run inference and generate the prediction. So um, I will uh, just let the, the chief uh, going through the process so you have an idea how easy this can can be uh, for an ML team to run uh, the inference and how fast this can be. So now we are at, um, you know, we need to read in uh, satellite imagery, right? Like from a URL, a T TMS, like tile uh, map service um, through this process. Um, then now we just like going to input uh, a few information about this like this is like a pr prediction version is allow us to versionize the the model so next time when you train a new model uh you can version it like uh 2.0 or something like that so you know this uh the inference result coming from a different sort of model what you need to do now is you just zip up your your model file and you upload it to uh, ML Enabler, what it does is just like push to the database, right? And uh, so uh, so this is a sort of like, now we, we have like model file living in the ML Enabler, and now it's time to spin up uh, AWS resources. And it does all this uh, backend um, spin up the uh, cloud formation, um, SQS, uh, uh, AWS Lambda function. And over here, uh, what human need to do is just like go, go in and submit the uh, inference, uh, inference, which is like, you know, like including any AOI you want to draw for this, um, for this interface. And soon you will see like how many tile available to this prediction uh, for for the in, uh, inference and once you have the inference you just like uh, need to click in to see uh, to zoom in you know basically now you're going to have like result coming back uh, pretty soon this is the white um, white tile uh, you see on the interface is the prediction uh, from the model uh, the ratio is the confidence score uh, from the prediction so by playing with the, the prediction, um, you know, like the score um, up and down, you can sort of like, you know, have an idea. So now you see there's a model correctly predict a college over there, right? So by playing with the ratio, you actually can um, decide like, you know, like what confidence score you want to export for the downstream manipulation. So now we are going to look at the uh, school category uh, inference result, and we're gonna, um, you know, uh, just like toggle the uh, ratio to 90, 93%, and then we're gonna uh, export this result. And 
yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's uh, that's the whole process of a uh, uh, ML enabler. And after that, um, humans just come to this uh, human mapper come into this picture, and they go through every single um, model prediction, and then you know, like trying to just uh, get a few stack. So that is the step you're seeing over here at the table, like massive table. I ap apologize for that. Um, but you only need to look at the two column over here. One is true capture. We want to reflect like how uh, how many real school or true school the model can actually uh, capture. Uh, sometimes, you know, like you can say that is the recall score, right? And on the other side, right, right, uh, you do see a lot of uh, school complex like um, tile that, you know, like we never, um, they never has been mapped um, before. So we can see that those are unmapped school. Um, they, through this process, human goes through exactly the same process that um, breaking down to three category, uh, yes, unrecognized and no. So we never consider unrecognized and no to be on the, on the, on the map. So what you see, uh, the steps is reflect to this um, um, only like yes, yes category um, included. So this is the map, a before and after map you're looking at. Um, the green color is the known or existing school. Um, and uh, I want you to pay attention to the yellow dots. The yellow dots are missing school that predicted by ML model and confirmed by expert mapper. Uh, through this uh, model output validation process. Um, and blue dots, it just reflects like how well this model can, can uh, predict the true school uh, correctly. Um, that is for East Africa, uh, Kenya and Rwanda, and now we're looking at Sierra Leone and Niger. Um, and again, uh, these go to uh, Central Asia, uh, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. So you actually, um, if any of you interested to just like, you know, zoom in to see each single point, I, I do have a site uh, link for you over here to look at it. Um, just let me know. Um, you, can, you can play with, um, you can see yourself uh, if you are from those country and you wanna validate if your high school or, you know, your college your uh, primary school anyway was able to capture by our mapping process if wasn't being able to capture then that is the issue to bring up right like in the future and honduras and ghana um remember that uh Uzbekistan and then uh, ghana are two a uh, country like we don't really have a data so far so that's why you see so many yellow dots uh, through this process um, this is just like a screenshot, a few examples of like unmapped school looks like. Uh, those schools are basically currently is not existing on the map, right? Like, so that's 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 what we add uh, through this uh, whole ML uh, prediction process. And sorry, Nama, uh, yes. just a reminder that your time's almost up. Oh, okay. Um, I just like want to go through uh, really quickly that you know like having ml uh, assisted workflow is it's about speed and scalability that show like we can map like 60 plus times faster than without uh, ml um the con is we do introduce bias to this whole process right like because human tend to pick up some sort of like common pattern and recognize both from the space but we might miss out a lot of uh, schools in poor neighborhood that they just like can't recognize from the space and um, also like unrepresentative so far. So moving forward, we think, you know, like human in the loop, uh, active learning could be a way to go, especially incorporate local expert uh, knowledge. For example, if you from uh, the country and your school wasn't be able to, to recognize, then you can serve as a local expert through the active learning. So. Um, the idea is we will look back to train, retrain or keep uh, the model learning so model will be able to have a certain prediction power. 
So that's it. Keep in touch. Uh, if you have any question, um, just just let me know. I would love to answer. Okay. Um, do we the questions are already in the chat. Maybe you can answer and I'll post them in the venue less chat. Have you done with multi bands imagery? Uh, no. This is the R only RGB um, because the model was like transfer learn from ImageNet. Um, and what did you involve in taking your master with that? That's good class to put them to class something like that. Yes, this is very transferable. If you want to do hospital, they, you can use this model as well. Um, do you see the country as an input to the model besides the super tile? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if I understand that question correctly. Did you make any assumption on the size of the school boundary size? Uh, did that differ from country to country? That's an excellent question. Um, we use 300 meter by 300 meter. That assumption is any significant size of school should be able to capture by the size of the image chip. Um, I, I, uh, your expert mapper in the uh, OSM community. Yes, if you're looking, uh, looking up uh, DevC data team, you will see the name uh, in the OS OSM uh, community. Are they local to the country? No, they are not local. They're, they're based in Peru. So uh, Colombia, uh, Peru school, they know a lot about, but because they have like a lot of experience mapping in the OSM ecosystem, so they do have uh, enough uh, knowledge about what map uh, feature looks like uh, in this context. Do you, are you using something like Facebook uh, Rapid uh, editor for validation. We do have uh, some sort of like internal uh, validation tool, but if you want to use Facebook Rapid ID editor or um, JSON, you can do so. Yeah, so that's all the question I have, um, but I will be in the chat. So 